Hello and welcome back to Project Aldwin. So as you can see we're all set up now uh, in the new room and I have made a few small advancements which I will show you in the, the scenery and then uh, I'll be throughout this episode I'll be doing some more work on the, the layout obviously it'll be over a few days and I'll put it together uh, so this will just show you where I am now and then you'll see at the end of the video how far I've got and I also have some unboxing to do. I have uh, I did a new stock video in back in November, I think it was, and I had a box that I didn't show you. So I'll be opening that. And I got another uh, present for Christmas that arrived from a friend in the UK. So I'll be opening that as well. Uh, so uh, I've got that to look forward to in this video. Uh, so I'll take you down now to see the layout. So here we are, trackside once again at Colnes and Albans. And as you can see, I've done my brick papers inside the tunnel mouth. Uh, I don't know if I can take this round here. You might see it a bit better. Um, it'll look a lot better when the thing's actually finished. But now it doesn't look like there's just like a big cardboard tunnel. I might paint these bits black in here, as you can see, because they'll still be a bit obvious. But hopefully once the, the top is sorted, you won't see as much light coming in or whatever. Maybe make something on the other side here to stop so much light shining through because it's a bit unrealistic. And then, as you can see, I've started putting in, this is just loose newspaper for now, while I was just testing uh, how it's gonna look when I've done the paper mache stuff over the top. And then over here, I've started work on the cattle docks. So I've got some card here stuck to some stuff from making Metcalf platforms. And I've used the same stone that I used on my, uh, my station platform to make the, uh, Hang on, let's see if I can show it better now. Roll that out the way. Um, so that's got the same uh, brick texture. Uh, it, I mean, it's probably all right. I might get some white paint and do like some lime. Isn't that what they used on uh, cattle docks or something? Um, to have sort of spilled down. And then I have some of this here. It's the edging strips like I used on this platform. And that's what I'll use going along the edge there. And then I'll have to buy some fences or something to do the rest of the cattle dock uh, in time. And I've taken all the other um, unattached buildings off because once I've got the hill and stuff built, I'll be doing the ballasting. I don't know if I'll get that into this video or not, but I tested all the electrics before uh, I did this video and they're all working. So I should be able to get on with the ballasting fairly quick. I'll just show down here now. It still looks a bit rough, but I don't, I'm not that fussed because I think it actually looks quite good. Um, I have a, a bit of wood attached to the bottom now, but I still can't stop. There's a big old gap just under here. I don't know whether I'll just like build the ballast up underneath it or whatever, or put some filler in or something. I don't know. Um, but other than that, it seems to be going all right. I, um, once I build up more of this hill as well, I'll get out that photographic back scene I had in my Bjorglington Christmas special and I'll put it on to the, the back to see how it looks. So you will see that later on in the video. Right, I suppose I should get on and unbox those new models. Right, well it's time to get on with uh, opening up these boxes and showing you what's inside. So the first thing is this, which I got uh, last year. And I've been saving it to do a video with more things to show because it's easier to do them all together. And I haven't had any need to use it because the layout wasn't anywhere near finished. So um, this first one is, upside down, a Hornby R6980 GWR Siphon H Bogey Wagon number 1433. And uh, I'm fairly certain that this model was one of those sort of ones that's passed between manufacturers. Was it made by someone like me or something before in the past? I can't remember. I don't think it's a 100% original Hornby. <laughs> right. But, uh... Don't necessarily follow me so strictly on that. I'd say look it up for yourself if you're interested. Or find another review thing. Right, so, as you can see, it's wrapped in this plastic packaging. Take that off. 
It's got a white roof. It has a nice bit of plastic on the top to protect the, the white roof from getting too damaged. So there you go. And if I move this down here, we can see it a bit better now. This is just a piece of second radius track. Um, I'll show it on the layout when I have the other thing open as well before I start any work and I'll show you how they are. It's very nice. The, the writing is very crisp and well printed, although I don't know, there's a bit of dirt or something <laughs> where the S is on that. But, um, but no, it's a very uh, attractive model, but I don't know how realistic the pristine white roof would actually be um, in a train with uh, a steam locomotive at the front of it. So I'll just turn it around this way and you can see it from the other angle. Yeah. There you go. Is that in focus now yet? Yeah, and underneath it has got uh, some detailing and metal axles, older style uh, couplings though. Um, the moulding there is very interesting because it ha clearly has what looks like another logo uh, bit underneath the Hornby bit. That arch there. So I wonder who could have had an arch like that for their thing. I don't know. Mainline maybe? It's not one of theirs, is it? I suppose it could be with the shape of the couplings. But I could be talking absolute nonsense. Because it's early morning and I've only had one coffee. So now I suppose we'll roll that out the way off the other side of the desk and I'll get out my other model. So we just put this back here. To say I'm not the most professional at doing this. Now, this one is a Hornby R40066A GWR four wheel third class coach number 1882. So I do have um, some of the LBSC uh, four wheelers from Hornby. I don't have any coaches with mag lights in, but this is the first one of a different livery um, four wheeler that I've got. And it's got inside the box, it's got instructions for fitting the, the mag lights or whatever. The Hornby have changed their um, supply. Sorry, that's the, the tripod scraping on the, the table. Um, Hornby have changed it now, so you don't actually get the battery with it. I don't think you have to get that separately, or it's not it's not fitted into the thing or something. I don't understand that because you know, surely it'd be more dangerous to have it not fitted than fitted. So, anyways, enough about that. I've got the coach boards that go down the bottom, and just get that out there. Check that away. Do that again, or that. So never put things back in their boxes. So there we have it. And there. The Hornby four wheel coach in Great Western livery. And as you can see up here, it's got 1882. Third, 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 third. They all say third because it's a third class coach. And you can see the GWR logos there. It doesn't show up brilliantly, um, it's actually quite faint. But if you if you catch it in the right light like that, you can see it quite well. And it's nice because the colours are um Nice, you know, the Great Western colours are very pretty. And then there's the bottom. I see all the detailing, the metal wheels and the NEM pockets. And so it's a nice, it's got red coaches on the inside. It's a nice model and very good. It was a very nice present from my friend Larry because now I can have that on my new Great Western branch terminus to go with the other engines that I got for Christmas as well. I can put it behind my new... Hornby pannier tank, and so I'll have to get a brake coach, I suppose. And obviously, this maybe it'll end up in a train with the siphon. I think that might be a little bit too modern for it, but maybe not. I'm not an expert on the, the Great Western Railway, so yes, I'll go pop these onto the layout, and you'll get to see how they look in the station. Right, will you join me at this fascinating, uh, the complicated stage uh, of fitting the vaccine to the vaccine board, this photographic one that I got with Rowie Modeler. 
So I'm just attaching it now. I've got some PVA that I'm painting on because I can't get anything else. Um, and I've got a ruler somewhere that I've been using to try and smooth out the air bubbles, but hopefully they'll go away. If not, maybe we'll just see this sort of ripply cloud effect, I don't know. But we'll see if I get that out. I need some sort of roller. Maybe I'll get a rolling pin. Um, maybe that's not such a bad idea. And then I've got this piece here, which will go over here and continue the scene. Um, yeah. So I had to film this little clip to show you how that's going and you'll see how it turns out later on. And I've got some pieces up here to start making a little bit of a uh, hill or a little bank or whatever to follow around where the tunnel is. And I've mapped out better where the blacksmith's forge is going to go. So now it's uh, on with the next job. Right, well as you can see, I just have a few small issues, some of the roughness of the surface beneath caught hold of the paper at this end but hopefully it won't be too noticeable from a distance you can see it kind of ripples but like i said maybe we'll just pretend they're sort of really high cloud or something um and it is i mean it's going to do the same thing over here because i'm using pba but hopefully it won't be too much of a problem so the board does keep moving apart i have to put some tape around the back of here because the screw is not holding it anymore but uh, yeah so hopefully it will dry and it'll look right. It doesn't quite go to the end of here. And obviously it doesn't go up here. But I'll have like plants and things over there. So, you know, but it definitely looks better than than what I had. The, the you know, old blue paint. And if it does end up looking absolutely terrible. Sure, I could just paint blue paint over it again anyways. But, you know, I think it'll, it'll do anyways. Um, this is only meant to be a relatively cheap project. With, you know, a few scraps that I had and a few cheap kits. Um, you can see why four wheels there and the siphon. Um, so I'm going to work on sticking these uh, cardboard pieces to the back and then uh, I can do maybe some more of the lamp forming or whatever and get on with the ballasting. As you can see, it's miserable and wet. That's Storm Franklin outside, and so we shall move over to here. Where, as you can see, I've done the grass work. I've put the back scene up. I've done some ground areas with some sand to look kind of like a muddyish, sandyish track for the the cattle dock here and the goods yard over there. And here's where the uh, blacksmiths will be and hopefully now I can get on and do some ballasting after I double check the electrics are working so let's get on with that now right well as you can see I've got my spoon <laughs> and my ballast and I'm just tipping it into the, the gaps of the sleepers at the moment over by the, the cattle dock and I've got my paintbrush and uh, I think you're supposed to use a one inch bomb this is a two inch bomb because it's all I have but and I'm just brushing the stones off the top of the sleepers into the uh, the gaps in the sleepers and around the the sleepers at the side and just kind of tamping it down or whatever it is brushing it down into the the gaps moving any excess along so that I don't end up wasting more than I need to although it'll probably all flow around anyways once we have it down. Um, I'm trying to leave these big areas until later on I can, I don't know, maybe buy a different colour ballast that looks a bit dirtier as if they've moved older ballast out the way or put some ashes down maybe. The soot clinker kind of ballast stones. And to be careful over here now because I've got the, the points. You have to make sure now that you get everything into the right spaces and you don't get stone chipping stuck in all the guard rails and the where the point blades need to switch because then your points won't work 
and that can be incredibly frustrating, disappointing. You probably have to soak all the ballast and pull up the track and stuff just to get it to work, or pick at it with a fine screwdriver and cry. <laughs> um, so I just, and I'll, I'll go back over all of the track anyways once once I have all the ballast down, if I don't run out anyways, and then that will uh, just neaten it all up, ready for gluing. And I kind of have to be quite quick with this because I've got to go to work later, so I want to get it done. Uh, as I said earlier on in this clip, before I start ballasting, there's a big old storm outside, so hopefully the power doesn't go, because it will be hard to see what I'm doing, because it's a very dark and grey day outside. And I'll appreciate that this might seem a little bit of a boring task to do, and it is, but at the same time, you want to get it looking absolutely perfect. There's a lot of back and forth, and I'll have to go over it with a finer brush, maybe. So I'll show you some more when, uh, when we've got it a bit more done. Right, so as you can see, I've got the ballast is now spread out, it's as best as I can do with the amount that I've got. And I've got some PVA and water mix here, and I've just got this old cow pole syringe, because that's all I can find at the moment. And I'm going to suck up the stuff and squirt it into around the track, and hopefully it'll all go well. Uh, knowing my luck, it probably won't, but, you know, time to get started. Anyways, um, as you can see, I've now done the soaking with the glue and water mixture and I've no idea whether I'll end up with points glued shut or um, you know stuff that just doesn't work until after it dries out and then I can neaten it up and then I'll have to get some fine ballast just to go in where the other ballast has sort of washed away a little bit you know just try and focus it a bit there there we go um, as you can still see kind of the baseboard a little bit through it um, and some more sort of ballast to kind of fill in these these gaps. Um, but now it's it's gone down all right. Uh, normally it would take me ages and ages, but I had to do it fairly quick. Uh, so yeah, hopefully it all turns out well. Uh, but we won't know until I don't know tomorrow maybe. So I'll film again then and see how it's doing. But you know I'll probably hoover it and half of it will come up. But we'll find out. Well, as you can see. The weather has improved somewhat, um, so it's been a bit warmer. Um, and eventually, after several days, the ballast and the glue finally dried out. And so I have hoovered it off, and I have ta -da, put some of the buildings back on. I haven't done the walling yet for the uh, Blacksmith's Forge yet. I decided not to put in too much of a hill over this side in the end. Uh, because it was just getting in the way of behind the signal uh, box and the um, engine shed area. But it still comes down quite nicely there. And as you can see, there's still lots of patches where I need to get more ballast. An interesting thing I found, though, is that the Hornby, the fine um, ballast that I had from Hornby, has turned the same colour black as the... Oh, it was some of the... I don't know if it was Peak or something like that, but some of the... Um, company's black kind of sooty um, clinker ballast stuff which I added in over that side anyways um, when I ran out of other ballast and it's practically the same colour now I don't know if that will change um, when it's completely dried out or if it's to do with the glue that I used but either way um, I think it looks all right it looks well used anyways the ballast um, I don't know if I'll go for a, a more sort of dirty browner kind of colour ballast for in between and I'll probably get some more of the ash and soot and coal ballasty stuff for over there. So I've got some wagons over in the goods yard which the goods yard I need to basically make uh, because I don't have anything for that so I'll have to make like a staves and a, um, a goods platform and then the new siphon wagon is in the bay platform and the sleeper wagon that I got for Christmas and then over here we have um, the time traveling cattle wagon because it's in BR livery instead of Great Western but I have all the track cleaned up and ready to run and I will show you now 
the first train departing the ballasted Colne St Aldwyn station. Uh, if I can get it to go the right way. Yeah. Ready, go. Well, that's the end of this episode of Project Aldwyn. It took a while to film because everything is a slow process when you're ballasting and painting and building paper mache and stuff like that. Hopefully in the next video I might have some more new stock, if I'm lucky, <laughs> and uh, get on to doing the brass work and everything. So we'll find out in the next video. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Thanks and goodbye.